you guys, it's Rowan and welcome back to this week's video. I am so excited to get into this one. So for today, we'll be going around Jorvik and testing out all of the cafes and restaurants and rating them on a scale of 1 to 10. Today we will be joined by Alice Bravewell. I am so happy that she's come to help us out in this video as Rowan isn't able to get to some cafes. For today's shoutouts, we'll have three at the beginning and three at the end. The first ones go to Lynn Juhlberg RRP, Rosalie Big Tiger, and Sad Bears SSO. Make sure to give them a follow and go check out their cute pages. And without further ado, let's go get some coffee. First up we have the Vlendel Cafe, which is actually called the Grey Monk. I'm gonna be honest, I had no idea Vlendel even had a cafe. I definitely pass by it every time I come here, but now that I am here, I will say I wish the tables weren't so spread out. I think it'd be better if they were all closer together. I like all the angles. However, when you order, this is a little creepy. Um, I love how on the menu everything is sweets. I ended up getting the blue macaroon, macaron, however you say it. And it is seriously the cutest thing I've ever seen on a SISO. Overall, this cafe is great. I like how they sell only sweets. However, it is a bit unseen. Um, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 simply because I wish it would stand out more. Next is the Dundle Cafe, which is actually called the Coffee Pot Cafe. This definitely has to be my favorite cafe out of them all. Like, first of all, there's a newspaper cart. This is perfect for roleplay. Like the Vlendel Cafe, I didn't even know it was there, but now that I do, I'm seriously coming here all the time. It is very isolated, but I think it fits it, and it's just a very cozy place. The menu has a variety of foods and drinks. I personally liked the breakfast side of it. I ended up getting a cup of tea and some cake. The cup of tea is absolutely adorable, but guys, the, the cake looks like a blob of ketchup. <laughs> Overall, this cafe is amazing. It's the perfect place to grab breakfast before an adventure. It's very welcoming and just the cutest little cozy coffee shop. I'm going to give this a 10 and when Rowan is allowed here, I'm probably going to move her home stable here just so I can grab breakfast every morning. Next is the Fort Pinta Beach Cafe and to start, it was super hard to find because you see here, it says menu, so you'd expect this to be a cafe. But no, you can't sit down here, which is a bummer because this would make an adorable cafe. Eventually, I found it at the beach, which is a great summer hangout spot. When I opened the menu, I'm telling you, I didn't even think to look at the other items before I bought the coconut. It was perfect for the occasion and it is so cute. It even has a little umbrella. Overall, it's a great place to hang out when you're feeling summery. The only downside is it's easy to get confused between here and the other place. I also wish they had more items on the menu such as watermelon or pineapple slices rather than just drinks. Overall, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I'm literally watching a romance unfold. Like, will their love survive or no? The next cafe is in Dino Valley, which is called Igor's Restaurant, and guys, I had the most traumatic experience here. I was just standing here, minding my own business, waiting to go in, when he starts doing this. You are so lucky you're not hearing what I'm hearing, and why is he stomping like that? I will have nightmares for the rest of my life. Thank you. The wood floors and flowers are a nice touch. I like that vibe to the cafe. It is a bit cold. Um, but to make matters worse, <laughs> he's my server. <laughs> Another red flag about this place is the menu. I know they're trying to stick with the snowy theme, but ice cream, really? Like, get me some hot chocolate. It's cold. I ended up getting a milkshake, which was probably delicious, but way too cold for that. Overall, it's just a big no, okay? It's cold, it's far away, there's creepy music, the menu is crappy, and the most creepiest welcoming I have ever received. Um, negative 3 trillion out of 10, would not recommend. Next is the cafe at the Wolf Hall Inn. There actually isn't any sign that says that there's a cafe here. I just remember that there was something there. 
I haven't released Rowan's backstory yet, but she actually comes from here, as her, na as her last name is the Wolf Hall. She grew up here with her parents running the inn, so it's quite boring in her opinion. I do wish that there were more than three tables, but this would be a great place for a little get together with some friends. Now, I'm not loving the angle here, but the food is pretty great. There's lots of options. I like that they have a cafe here. It's perfect for if you're spending the night, you could grab dinner before you're off to bed, or even lunch if you're just passing by. It's a nice and friendly place. I just wish it was more out there. I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. Next is the Silverglade Observatory Cafe, which is called Heavenly Heights Cafe. This place is often forgotten, and I'm not a fan of that. It is a hike to get here, but once you're there, it is the, the cutest coffee shop. The view is amazing, and you learn to love how distant it is. I will say I don't like how there's a shop here. It kind of ruins the coffee shop vibe, but I get that they're trying to promote their items, but I would rather it not be there. I love that they have this table here that's just spread out with food for just a visual layout of what they have. The service is great and it makes you feel very welcomed. The menu has lots to choose from and it's not too expensive. This place is perfect for if you want a private meeting with your club or a smaller group. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Next is the Silverglade Manor Cafe which is called the Silver Fork Restaurant. Like the observatory, this place is very forgetful. I honestly don't even remember that this cafe existed, so that's not the best start. Now that is, <laughs> that's a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the layout here. I mean, I do like how it's on a roof, which is pretty unique, and the view is nice as well. The service is good, and the menu does have lots to choose from, but honestly, with a name like the Silver Fork Restaurant, I expected something fancy, and this just isn't living up to its expectations. I'll give it credit, it is unique and is a perfect place for a private event, but it's just not my favorite, it gets a 4. Next is the Fergrove Cafe, which is called Ma Ann's Pastry Shop. I've always loved this cafe, like even before I thought about making this video, I'd visit this cafe quite often. It's just very cozy and welcoming, the service is great, there's lots to choose from on the menu. This is a perfect place for when the weather gets chillier. You could come here for some morning coffee or some hot chocolate. I definitely move my home stable here just so I can visit here more often. Definitely great, it gets a 9 out of 10 from me. Next we have the Aiden's Plaza Cafe, which is called the Harp Cafe. This is another place that is easily forgotten and underrated, but is so cute. To start off, I love the music choice. It definitely gives you that chill and relaxed vibe. I love the options to roleplay here. You can either be on the cashier side or the other side. That's a lot of money. Hayden's Plaza is overall a great place to roleplay and to hang out with friends. And this cafe is an amazing addition. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Next is the Yorvik City Mall, which is called the Golden Saddle. I'm getting very Starbucks vibes from here and I really like that. I like that there's an actual counter with food displayed, you can actually read the menu. It's pretty relaxing here, I could definitely imagine bringing a book here to chill and have a cup of coffee. And yet again, another great private place for your club or just friends. Once again, it's a great place to roleplay and I really like that they have that addition here. It gets an 8 out of 10 from me. The next one is in Governor's Fall. It's called Leonardo's Ice Cream Parlor. I like how you can either sit outside on a nice day or go inside if you want if it's too hot. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I feel like I should go help, but I don't know. I personally like sitting outside. It's more relaxing watching the cars go by. It's very city-like but I chose to sit inside where there is an air hockey table, a counter full of tons of flavors, a jukebox, and a stage for live music. I know that this is an ice cream parlor, but I'd like it more if there were more items on the menu that weren't just ice cream, such as fruits or cakes, um, something that's still perfect for a sunny day. Overall, this place is super fun and very enjoyable. Imagine if you got your whole club to fill this room, that would be insane. 
This is just the perfect place to hang out with some friends. I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. Next is the Yarlum Cafe. It's called the Star Stable Bucks Cafe. I'm in love with how big this cafe is. It seems to have two different sections. There is this part of the cafe, and then there is this one. I love how it's right on the water and can be taken either as a relaxing place to enjoy a late lunch or a lively meal with the whole city walking by. I honestly think Star Stable should consider doing a festival in this cafe because of how big and available everything is. I like how it's in the middle of everything, the city, the Goldspurs Farm, the Paddock Island, the Sunfield Farm, and the Yorvik Stables. You could grab something to eat and then be on your way to a quest. I love how lively and big this cafe is, it gets a 10 from me. Next is the West Cape Fishing Village Cafe and it's called the Red Shark Cafe. I like how it's right on the water. I'm sure it's beautiful to watch the sunset or sunrise while enjoying a snack. However, it is a suspicious place in my opinion. First off, the food is basic and nothing we already haven't already had. The music is eerie and it's just way too far away for comfort. It's all too quiet and you could say it's just very uncomfortable. For some reason, this lady does doesn't leave my side as I try and eat <laughs> and the whole place just made me uncomfortable. I'm gonna give it a four because it is on the water and I bet the sunsets are amazing but I definitely wouldn't go here for fun. The last cafe on our list is the one in New Hillcrest and it's called the Olive Grove Bakery. This one also didn't have a sign to direct anyone however it is a cute little shop in the midst of a big city which I like. Imagine if I were to live in one of these houses in the neighborhood and I could just wake up every morning and come here for breakfast. I do wish it was a bit bigger than just three tables, but it is perfect for a single lunch date. I like how they only have sweets on their menu to go along with their bakery style theme. I personally wouldn't go here too often simply because I really don't like New Hillcrest, but I definitely recommend it for an afternoon snack. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. And that's going to wrap up this video. I know it was kind of long. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you might have found your next hangout spot or perhaps impressed your friends with a fun date. Before we go, the last three shoutouts for this video go to Alexis Stone Garden, Coco, Emerald Sky, and Amber Nightfire. Make sure to check out their Instagrams. If you'd like a shout out, all you have to do is head over to Instagram and post about my channel either on your story or feed and make sure to tag me in it. I hope that you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.